we're traveling on the Al-Andalus luxury train throughout southern Spain. You know, Spain is filled with lots of surprises. We're here at Baeza, and this is another UNESCO heritage site. Here we are in Baeza, a city that has been declared World Heritage Site by UNESCO in the year 2003, like uh, the uh, sister town of Ubeda. And uh, we are now in this uh, Square of the Lions. Uh, the name is given by the font, which is a Roman old uh, font, uh, second century, but was taken here only in the 16th century. Then uh, next to the font, we have this other building, which is uh, uh, today the court, uh, the Palace of Justice, but in reality, well known as the slaughterhouse, the abattoir. Uh, so conceived in the 16th century to sacrifice animals and uh, to dry their skins, their fur in the upper floor. Taken here stone by stone only in, in the year 1962. Uh, next to it, we have two arches. The one on the left, on the left is the gate of Jaén, so a former Moorish gate, which was uh, transformed in the year 1526 when uh, the Emperor Charles married Isabel of Portugal in the Alcazars of Seville. After the wedding, they spent their, let's say, honeymoon in Granada. And after their honeymoon, on their way back to, to Castile, they stopped in Baeza. So in order to honor their visit, the ancient uh, Moorish gate was transformed as we see it today. And on the right hand side, we have the Arch of Villalar. It is simply a small town in uh, central north uh, Spain where this uh, sort of uh, civil conflict, civil war in between a part of the population in Castilla who supported the Emperor Charles. Don't forget Emperor Charles was a foreigner, was Flemish. So when he came here as a king of Spain, he was 17 years old, never been here before, didn't speak a word of Spanish. So he, as grandson of Isabella and Fernando, became the king of Spain. Welcome to the Museum of the uh, Olive Oil Culture. Uh, we are in uh, Baeza, uh, in the province of Jaén, in Andalusia, the most important producer of olive oil in the world. Uh, we are really in the middle of the capital of olive oil production everywhere. Uh, so we produce approximately 20% of the oil, olive oil, in the world, right here in this county. And uh, so we have around us something like 65 million olive trees. And right here, what we are visiting now, this morning, is uh, the Museum of the Culture of Olive Oil called Hacienda La Laguna. It is a place that we already know since uh, the 16th century uh, because of a lagoon, a natural lagoon, that became finally in the 19th century an important, uh, uh, let's say, water deposit, uh, a dam really. And that engineer finally not only created this uh, irrigation system, but also a building which is quite strange, uh, practically has no roof. In reality, it is closed, of course, but it misses today what was the original granary. It was taken away only in the 20th century, but that was created by this policy engineer to store the olive oil. We are in the garden of uh, varieties, uh, where we look at those trees, and these trees, uh, they look like all the same. In reality, they all are different ones. Eh? Now it is uh, the moment of uh, uh, pollinization. The flowers uh, are falling down little by little, so practically only 10% of all these flowers will uh, end up in being fruits and develop the olives. You don't see many differences now. When uh, the fruits are on those trees, obviously you see the different uh, varieties, the different size, uh, shapes and colors, uh, the different ripeness in different moments uh, through uh, the uh, fall winter time, which is when they really get mature, get ripe and uh, are picked. Well, here we are now in this uh, square of Santa Maria in Baeza. The name is given by the cathedral, which uh, sometimes we say is considered uh, the first uh, cathedral in Andalusia because uh, this town was conquered in 1227 over the Arabs and uh, the first Christian cathedral then in Andalusia was uh, built here. Even so, the fountain behind me, it is called the Fountain of Santa Maria. And on the other side of the square, we have uh, the former seminar of St. Philip, so a priest school very successful, very important, with hundreds of students during the 18th and 19th century overall. One of the most influential institutions in uh, Andalusia because uh, some of the first students, rectors, professors here have something in common, which has been conversos, or at least a descendant of conversos, former Jewish people in Spain after the order of their expulsion in 1492. And uh, the fear that uh, this was a place where the subject uh, teached here were teached under non-conventional ways, not controlled by the church. Uh, fear of being a focus of enlightenment, alumbrados, uh, basically following 
reformations that uh, were not agreed by the church in those days. Here we are now in this uh, square of uh, the Santa Cruz or the Holy Cross in Baeza where the most important building is the palace uh, behind me which is the palace of Jabal Quinto. It is a former private palace since the late 15th century, one of those beautiful examples of how those noble, important uh, feudal families will now construct uh, their palaces not only with uh, military defensive purposes but with uh, other ideas which are symbolizing their wealth, their importance, their uh, power, uh, the splendor of those families. And on the opposite side we have the Church of uh, Santa Cruz of the Holy Cross which is uh, what gives the name to this little square. And it is one of those very few good examples of Romanesque architecture in Andalusia. This is the palace of Jabal Quinto, that is nowadays the International University of Andalusia, with the name of uh, Antonio Machado. The Muslim influence, you know that uh, Islamic houses are done to the inside, not to the outside. They don't have uh, windows in Always, the Always, again, with the uh, in this case fountain, but always in Muslim houses with a small pool, okay? So this is gonna influence also this kind of Renaissance courtyards that you're gonna, you're gonna find here. Now we are going to visit Ubeda. We will focus our tour in its historic center, which is basically the result of the private promotion. And there is a very, very important family in Ubeda that we consider the most important patrons of the wealth of 16th century Ubeda. Sometimes I compare them to the Medicis in Florence. So like the Medicis in Florence, the family Cobos Molina in Ubeda. There is a very important member of that family called Francisco de los Cobos Molina, who was born in Ubeda, who died in Ubeda, but practically he never lived in Ubeda. Once Isabel died, the queen died, he moved to Flanders, to Gant, to continue his uh, education formation in the court of Charles. And when uh, finally Charles became Charles I of Spain, fifth of Germany, this man from Ubeda was the chosen one to be his personal counselor. He's a secretary of state. He was the, uh, let's say, sort of financial minister, practically the one who really handles the economy during the empire. And he made a fortune, incredible fortune, being the person who gives value, who counts literally the gold and silver coming from Americas to Seville. And for that function, he will keep 1%. So that gave him the option to buy palaces, castles, land, and uh, to build also two huge palaces, one in Valladolid and the other one here in his hometown. Ubeda. Uh, once we are here in the front of this uh, chapel of El Salvador, we are in front really of one of the most surprising buildings and one of the most, uh, let's say, interesting in the humanist aspect, in the, in the humanism aspect. All is symbolic, of course, all is stone made, starting with the two towers. Towers, we call them flameras with, with eternal flame on the top part. And like in cemeteries, like in pantheons, that light always on. The coat of arms of the co founders, Cobos, with the five lions, hold by Roman soldier uniform. Those uh, tenants, they wear a Roman soldier uniform. The one of his wife, Maria Mendoza, held by Sibylas. And the four of them are standing on sarcophagus. You see the, those sarcophagus? And right at the bottom of those sarcophagus, we can see that very clearly on the left hand, one, left -hand side, we have a human skull and a couple of people on each side trying to get out of there. Well, that is exactly what they represent from the biblical apocalypse, the dead will get out from darkness, from hell, struggle, fight to save themselves. Reach God, reach heaven, and there they are fighting for that. A bit more inside, that naked man fighting with a, a centaurus, half man, half horse. Same place to the right side, we have these men fighting with two bulls. That is Hercules. And Hercules is this pagan classic figure who in some ways represents also effort, salvation proof that after those two last works, Hercules got to the Pantheon to, with the pagan gods that are represented underneath the main entrance in the arch. So there are the Pantheon's gods, right? And the two ladies above the arch, they represent faith and justice. The frieze gets clearly into the Old Testament. And there's a passage on the left-hand side, right above the two columns on the left-hand side, which uh, clearly shows their where we have a man, woman, little spots, little, little dots in between them, and that is uh, 
talking about the Exodus. The Jews escaped from Egypt, searching the Promised Land, Moses at the head, crossed the desert, starving, pray God to feed them, and God will send the manna from heaven. And there are those little spots representing the manna from heaven. And the main top central relief shows that passage from the Gospels, from the New Testament, that talks about the transfiguration of Jesus Christ on the Tabernacle, the Savior, El Salvador. My name is Paco Francisco. La concha, la concha means the shell. It's called the shell because of the shape of the roof. And this bodega was designed for the special visit of the Queen, Isabel II, in 1862. Now it's used for reception, but we a share it. All the barrejilla are full of wine, and the flags are from the different countries where we export our wine. 115 countries. The name of our company is Gonzalez and Bias. The family, the founder was Gonzalez, Spanish. He founded this company in 1835. Later, he joined to the English family. We keep the name, but we have only the family Gonzalez now. They bought the share, and we have only the family Gonzalez, the fifth generation. The share is because of the evaporation of alcohol, and it's because of the evaporation, and then this is the angel share. The angel can drink it, but they can enjoy it. Here we have a small museum of the vineyard dedicated to the tiling plantation, like long time ago. You can see over there. The traditional present, the capacity of our company now is more than one million kilos a day. But once a year we can see this present because we have the harvest festival and we press the grape in the traditional way. It's a very special day here in Jerez and the cathedral is very close.